Here's an example where we have to find the volume of a solid that's bounded by a cylinder and a plane. So let's start off with a sketch. It says we're in the first octant, so even though this is a cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 4, that would go all the way around. It's a ra circle of radius 2, but then z is free. This would go all the way around, but I'll just draw that part dashed because we have to remain in the first octant where x, y, and z are all positive. So we have this cylinder going up. We also have this plane, uh, z plus y equals 3. This plane is independent of x, so it looks the same everywhere. Let me just look at it here in the uh, yz plane. When y is equal to 0, then z can be 3, but by the time we get out here where y is equal to 2, and we're only down this far. So we have this uh, cylinder coming up, well just a quarter of the cylinder basically, and then as we, um, as we come back in, then the cylinder goes up like that. So it's as if we uh, maybe um, maybe think of it as like a pickle slice, right? So you, you cut a pickle into quarters and then you sliced one end off flat and you sliced another one at sort of an angle and this is the piece that, that resulted. Well, we just want to find the volume of that piece. Let's start by looking at, let's think about it as an integral over this two-dimensional region, right? For each little, little chunk here in the xy plane, we'll multiply that by the height of the curve, which z is 3 minus y, right? If z plus y is 3, we'll multiply that by the height of the curve, and that will give, you, give us the volume of a tiny chunk within this uh, sliver of this cylinder, and we'll just sum all those up. So, so first let's look at the, at the base then, this region in the xy plane that's just part of this circle of radius 2, and we could set up um, the coordinates uh, any way we like, but maybe let's uh, slice it. Um, yeah, we'll just slice it like this. We'll put, we can put x between 0 and 2, and then y, because the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals 4. Solving for y gives y is the square root of 4 minus x squared. So for each x value, our y value is going to start at 0 and climb until it reaches this upper bound, which is the circle square root of 4 minus x squared. That gives me bounds on my integral, so I can just set up my integral and do it. Now the constant bounds need to be on the outside, x going from 0 to 2. And then what I'm integrating, let's see, um, uh, let's see, y is going from 0 to 4 minus x squared and what I'm integrating the height is, is z, right, which is always given by 3 minus y. So I just need to integrate this with respect to y and then integrate with respect to x. So to do that I just need to find an antiderivative for this with respect to y which would be 3y minus 1 half y squared. So we get the integral from 0 to 2. Um, let's see, when we plug in our bounds here. If we plug in uh, the square root of 4 minus x squared, we get 3 times the square root of 4 minus x squared minus 1 half. If you square the square root, you just get plain 4 minus x squared um, minus, oh, yep, yeah, minus when we plug in 0 for y, we get 0, so you don't have to worry about that. We can just do our integral with respect to x. Okay, now this is really uh, two integrals that we need to do. The first one is the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 times the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And the other one is um, minus 1 half times the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared dx. This one's a simple um, a set of powers. This one's a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier um, because of the this, this square root here. So this one will be easy to do. This one is going to require a bit of a substitution. We think about, um, we think about our Pythagorean identity that says that cosine squared theta is equal to um, one minus sine squared theta. Um, that looks kind of similar. If I were just to multiply it by 4, 
And it looks a little bit similar to what we have here just by comparison. My idea is to make a substitution. If I set x equal to 2 sine theta, um, then, then this is going to turn out to be 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, which I can replace with 4 cosine squared theta, which I can then um, take the square root of cosine squared and have 4 cosine squared, and that will just be 2 cosine theta. As long as my uh, region is OK, I'll, I'll be able to... Um, I'll be able to just integrate that cosine. Let's see, so this is my idea for a substitution. If I choose that for x, then dx is going to be the same thing as 2 cosine theta d theta. Also, um, on my bounds with this substitution, if x is equal to 0, then solving for theta, that would tell me that when x is 0, theta would be the arc sine of um, 0, which is also 0. And when x is 2, then we would have the sine of theta is 1, and the arc sine of 1, so when x reaches this upper bound here, um, then theta is the arc sine of 1, and the arc sine of 1 is pi halves. So with all of that, this integral now will convert to the integral from 0 to pi halves of 3, and we've already mentioned that 4 minus x squared with this substitution is going to be 4 minus 4 sine squared, which is going to be 4 cosine squared. And the square root of that is going to be 2 cosine theta. So we have 3 times 2 cosine theta. And this dx is the same thing as um, 2 cosine theta d theta. So 2 cosine theta d theta for dx. OK, we're almost there. We just have to integrate from 0 to pi halves. Um, we've got uh, 12 times cosine squared theta. Let's just use an identity. Cosine squared theta is 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta all over 2. So with that identity, I can integrate both of these powers. I need to I have, um, let's see, this 2 takes out the 12 and makes 6. So I have 6. The antiderivative of 1 is going to be theta. And the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta is going to be 1 half sine 2 theta, which I just have to evaluate between 0 and pi halves. So the result here, um, when I take, um, when I plug in pi halves for theta, I get 6 times pi halves. And um, when I plug in pi halves here, 2 times pi halves is pi, and the sine of pi is 0, so that's 0. And when I plug in 0, I get 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So I just have 6 times pi halves, or 3 pi. That's just this first integral. I also need to calculate this integral, which is going to be minus 1 half. Antiderivative of 4 with respect to x is 4x minus 1 third x cubed. have to evaluate that between 0 and 2. So we have negative 1 half. When we plug in 2, we get 8 minus 8 thirds. And when we plug in 0, we don't get anything. So we have this, this is uh, negative 4 plus 4 thirds. So putting those two together, we find that our volume is 3 pi from the first integral minus 4 plus 4 thirds. Let's see, 4 is, neg is uh, negative 12 thirds plus 4 would be uh, negative 8 thirds. So we have 3 pi minus 8 thirds for our final answer. Now this integral um, is a little bit trickier. It's typically studied in, in Calc 2. So if you haven't had Calc 2, um, when you get, when you, if you get stuck on an integral, then you're welcome to use the symbolic manipulator to figure that integral out. So you could use Maple or Mathematica to do that.